بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله العلي الأرفق وجامع الأشياء والمفرق ذي نعم الواسعة الغزيرة والحكم الباهرة الكثيرة ثم الصلاة بعد والسلام على النبي القرشي الخاتم محمد خاتم رسل ربه وآله وأصحابه الأبرار الحائز مراتب الفخار أما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنها وصية رب العالمين للأولين والآخرين كما تصرح بذلك في محكم تنزيله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن اتقوا الله عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنها وصية خير الأنام نبينا محمد عليه أتم الصلاة والسلام كما جاء عنه في النصيحة قدمها إلى صحابه إلى صاحبه قائلا اتق الله حيثما كنت وأتبع سيئة الحسنة تمحوها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإنها رأس كل خير وإنها سبب الفوز والنجاح والفلاح في كلي دارين كما جاء في كتاب الله العزيز أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن للمتقين مفازا أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Iman after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying for his mercy and salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I begin this khutbah by giving myself and giving you the same piece of advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to those who came before us the same piece of advice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ وَصَيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That we gave our advice to those who were there before you. The same piece of advice that we are giving you, O nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which advice is that? Anittaqullah. Be God conscious. Be God fearing. Be God conscious. Be God fearing. This is the same advice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave to us. When one of his companions came to him and said, Give me your nasiha. Give me your advice, O Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, اتق الله حيث ما كنت Fear Allah wherever you are. Be God fearing wherever you are. Be God conscious in each and every situation that you find yourself in. Remember that Allah is always a witness of our actions and your actions. Remember that Allah will make us reckon in the day of reckoning pertaining to that which we engaged in or rather indulged in in dunya. So be God conscious in whatever engagement that you engage yourself in. And this piece of advice that Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have shared with us, wallahi, it's the source of every good thing in this world and in the hereafter. It's the source of success. It's the source of sustenance. It's the source of success in both worlds, as Allah says, inna lil muttaqina mafaza. Indeed, for those who will be God conscious in this life, then in the hereafter, they will be the most successful. Brothers and sisters in Iman, our khutbah today is titled Simple, Reward, uh, Simple Deeds and Huge Rewards. Small deeds in our eyes 
but huge rewards. And the topic that we will discuss will be with regards to Hajj. Because many of us, subhanallah, we wished to go for Hajj this year. We wished to go for Umrah this year. But then this was a year like no other. As you all know, we do pass through a period of calamity that has befallen the whole globe. We are struggling with this disease that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away from us. Brothers and sisters in Iman, most of us would have wished that we were there in the day of Arafah, standing by the plains of Arafah, and repeating, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Most of us wished that maybe we will be going around the house of Allah, repeating the words, Labbayka, la sharika laka labbayk. Most of us would have wished to be among us to those who will shave their heads in the day of Eid al-Adha. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought a challenge upon us. And as it was witnessed, most of us could not go for Hajj. But then the concept that I would wish us to take at home today, it's not about Hajj. It's not about the thawab of hajj only, but rather it's about the concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us in a bountiful way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us his bounties without measure. He doesn't care what you do unless you do it Provided you do it with ikhlas and the right intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no limits in whatever rewards that he will give you. So if you understand that Allah will give us his bounties without measure, irregardless of what we do, provided we have the right intention and we follow that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us, then that message will make us remain steadfast in ibadah till next season. Till next season. By saying till next season, I mean that most Muslims, this is a fact, most of us sometimes we enter into ghafla. We are forgetful of ourselves until when Ramadan comes. So that is when we start engaging in acts of worship. Because we expect to harvest from these bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us, after Ramadan, we enter into ghafla, we forget ourselves. We forget that we need to worship Allah in each and every season. We don't need to worship Allah only in Ramadan. So we wait for the, last, for the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. For the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, we wait for that period so that we will again ready ourselves to harvest all these bounties of Allah that are found in that period. And then we forget ourselves till the day of Ashura. We fast in the month of Muharram in the day of Ashura because we want to harvest these bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that you'll be forgiven for two years. In that, sorry, you'll be forgiven the sins of the previous year. And then we will forget ourselves till the month of Ramadan again. It's a long period. So the catalyst, the motivation that motivates us in worshiping Allah in Ramadan is we want all the bounties of Allah. We want these rewards that are found in Ramadan. The motivation that makes us motivated to worship Allah during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is because we know we have bounties of Allah given in those days. The motivation that makes us to fast and worship Allah 
in Ashura in the coming month is we are motivated by the fact that we'll get more rewards, huge rewards from simple deeds. This motivation never ends, brothers and sisters in Iman. This motivation should remain with us, Wallahi ila lahd, till when we are buried in our graves. Why? The opportunities are always there. The opportunities are always there. So today I would wish for us to address Hajj. And we will see that the bounties of Hajj are not only limited, the rewards that are given for Hajj are not limited in a specific period, but they are there with us in each and every day under the sun. So let us remain motivated and steadfast in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us not worship Allah seasonally. If we are motivated by the fact that we'll get more rewards from simple deeds, then wallahi, the motivation is always there. The rewards are always there, but only for those who are smart enough. So I would wish for us to look at Hajj. How do we get the Ajr, the Thawab, the rewards of Hajj even without having a visa or a passport or boarding a plane? Brothers and sisters in Iman, listen and listen carefully. And remember the message is what? If we worship Allah in these seasons because we are motivated by the fact that simple deeds have huge, humongous rewards, then let us stick motivated because, wallahi, these bounties of Allah, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ These are the bounties of Allah. He gives them to whomever he wishes. And Allah is the, is the most bountiful. He gives without measure. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us in the hadith which was reported by Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu ardah in Sunani Tirmidhi. And the hadith is classified as Sahih by Imam Al-Albani alayhi rahmatullah in the book Sahih uh, Sunani Tirmidhi. And Shaykh ibn Bas alayhi rahmatullah, when asked about the hadith, he said, La ba'asa bihi. This hadith, we can act and work upon it. Listen and listen carefully. Anas bin Malik says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, Man salla al-ghadata fi jama'atin. For a person, who will attend al-ghadata is a name which was used to refer to Salat al-Fajr. It was also known as Salat al-Ghada. Man salla al-ghadata fi jama'atin. For a person who will attend Salat al-Fajr in jama'ah. And here scholars say, this is not only limited to Salat al-Jama'ah that is offered in the masjid. بَلْ وَيَشْتَمِلُ عَلَى جَمَاعَةِ السَّفَرِ It also covers the jama'ah that people pray together when they are in a journey, provided that they pray together in jama'ah. وَالصَّلَاةُ الْمَرْءِ فِي بَيْتِهِ إِنْ كَانَ مَعْذُورًا جَمَاعَةً مَعَا أَهْلِهِ And the prayer that a person will pray in jama'ah with his family, provided that they have the udur of praying at home. That is also referred to in this hadith. So don't ask me, what if I'm a woman? My best salah is at home. Won't I get this reward? You'll get this reward, inshallah, provided you pray in jama'ah with your family members who pray at home. And this should encourage us men. 
that we attend for uh, Fajr in Jama'ah and we encourage our family members to pray Fajr in Jama'ah. Our wives and our children and our daughters at home, let them pray in Jama'ah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man sal al-ghadata fi Jama'atin, thumma qa'ada, yadhkuru allaha hatta tatlu'a shamsu. If this person, after praying Fajr in Jama'ah, remains fi musallahu in another narration, in the place that he prayed Fajr. So it can be at home, it can be in the masjid. If this person will remain, يذكرullah, remembering Allah, doing adhkar, hatta tatlu ashams, until the sun rises, بِمِقْدَارِ الرُّمْحِ The way Shaykh Ibn Baz alayhi rahmatullah says in his explanation of this hadith. That is approximately 20 minutes after sunrise. If a person will do this, pray Fajr in Jama'ah, remain steadfast in doing adhkar, it can be reading the Quran, reciting the Quran. And then this person, the Prophet says, ثُمَّ صَلَّى رَكَعَتَيْنِ And then this person prays two raka'at, it can be salatu shuruq or duha, two raka'as, a set of raka'as. This person, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كَانَتْ لَهُ كَأَجْرِ حَجِّنْ تَامًا كَانَتْ لَهُ كَأَجْرِ حَجِّنْ وَعُمْرَةً تَامًا 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 This person is given the reward, the thawab, Similar to a person who did Hajj and Umrah in totality. This person who prays Fajr in Jama'ah and remains in doing Adhkar or reading the Quran till sunrise, and then he prays or she prays two rak'ahs of Shuruq or Duha, this person gets the equivalent Thawab and Ajr of a person who went and performed Hajj and Umrah in its totality, in its totality, in its totality. That is what Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And the ulama say, this is a famous statement in such acts of worship, Al-Fadl wa thawabu fadl al-jaza la fadl al That this reward is given with regards to the rewards, al-jaza. And it doesn't mean that if you are rich and you are healthy and hajj is compulsory for you, you say instead of going for hajj, I'll save this money. Let me just be praying Fajr in Jama'ah and then I do adhkar and then I pray two rakahs, I'll be having the, uh, it will be sufficient for me. No. Because remember hajj is a pillar of Islam. So the reward, the bounty that you are given is fadlul jaza. It's the reward, the thawab, and not fadlul ijza. It doesn't mean that hajj is no longer prescribed for you or compulsory upon you. Let us remember that. But the bounty, the thawab, you'll be given in totality. The Prophet wasallam repeated the statement thrice. Secondly, dear brothers and sisters in Iman, let's listen and listen carefully. The Prophet wasallam, and this hadith is in the book of Imam Al-Tabarani, and Imam Al-Albani also classifies this hadith as Sahih. The Prophet wasallam said, Man ghada min baytihi, لا يخرج من غدا من بيته إلى المسجد لا يخرجه إلا ليتعلم الخير أو يعلمه. For a person who will leave his or her home coming to the masjid ليتعلم خيرا to listen to خير to learn أو يعلمه or to teach it to people, 
like all of you in this gathering, you've left your homes to come and listen to the khutbah, and this is khair for you. You want to learn the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For a person who comes with this intention to come and learn or to teach that which is khair, then this person kanat lahu ka ajril haj hajjahu. This person is given the thawab and reward of a person who went for hajj. The reward of hajj that he did. And remember again, al-fadlu fadlu al-jaza lal ijza. Remember this statement again. So this person who comes to listen to dars in the masjid, to listen to the khutbah, or comes to teach it to people, wallahi, when you walk all the way to the masjid, to listen to khair or to teach khair, wallahi al-azim, you get the ajr and the thawab of a person who went for hajj. These are from the bounties of Allah. And Allah's bounties are always with us. We don't need to wait for next season. Ibadullah, istaghfiru rabbakum, innahu kana ghaffar. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل في كل زمان فترة من الرسل بقايا أهل العلم يدعون من ضل إلى الهدى يحيون بكتاب الله أهل العمى ويصبرون منهم على الأذى فكم من قتيل للإبليس قد أحيوا وكم من ضال تائه قد هدوا ثم الصلاة بعد والسلام على النبي القرشي الخاتم محمد خاتم رسل ربه وآله وأصحابه الأبرار الحائز مراتب الفخار أما بعد عباد الله فلتعلموا أن فضل الله معنا دائما ولا تزال عنا فضل الله معنا دائما لذلك من يعبد ربه رجاء نيلي أو كسب هذه الفضائل فليعلم بأن فضل الله معنا وما علينا إلا أن نؤمن بربنا ثم لنستقم على ما أمرنا به فيا عباد الله كما قال إمامنا الشافعي عليه رحمة الله علينا بالاستقامة فهي لزوم منهاج الإسلام فلا تعلمون يا عباد الرحمن ما هي الفضائل والثواب يمكنكم نيلها من لزوم دين الله من لزوم عبادة الله مهما تغير المواسم Dear servants of Allah Know that These bounties and rewards of Allah are with us Irregardless of seasons We need not to worship Allah because of seasons but rather, we need to remain steadfast in worshipping Allah the way Imam Shafi'i alayhi rahmatullah said. That we need to remain with istiqamah, steadfastly worshipping Allah irregardless of seasons. We need to worship Allah with istiqamah the way we were commanded to worship Allah. For we don't know, we don't know how many rewards we are given every day in these simple acts of worship that we do. I do know that some of us worshipped Allah a lot in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Why? Because we had the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ صَالِحُ فِيهِنْ 
خير وأحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام. We heard that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that there are no days in a year in which acts of worship are more beloved to Allah and are rewarded greatly by Allah other than acts of worship that we do in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And that's why most of us worshipped Allah a lot. We fasted, we did lot of, lots of khairat. Why? We want this bounty of Allah. Kunna nurid kasba wa nayla hadhihi al-fadail. We wanted all these rewards, huge rewards. But brothers and sisters in Iman, Aisha radiyallahu anha wa ardaha narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahabbu al-a'mal ila Allah, the most beloved act of worship to Allah, adwamuha wa inqalla. Is that act of worship that you will persistently do it irregardless of how simple or little or less or small it is. So if we worshipped Allah because you wanted to give Allah the most beloved acts of worship to him, let us know that this opportunity is with us in each and every day, provided we stick to doing acts of worship however simple they are. We persist on them until death. And wallahi, those acts of worship will be the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going back to our topic, Hajj. Kaifa naksibu ajr al-Hajj? How do we get this thawab of, ajr, of, of, of Hajj, even without going for Hajj? And remember I said, al-jaza, al-fadlu, fadlu al-jaza, lal ijza. These are the rewards that you get out of the bounties of Allah and it doesn't mean that going for Hajj is no longer compulsory for you. Brothers and sisters in Iman, listen and listen carefully. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us and he says, Man kharaja min baytihi mutatahiran for a person who will take full ablution from his or her home ila al-masjid to the masjid ila salatin maktuba la yukhrijuhu illa salatan maktuba this person comes to the masjid to perform the five obligatory daily prayers a person takes wudu and full ablution from home coming to the masjid with the intention of offering Fard Salah, Salat in Maktuba, meaning Fard obligatory Salah. It can be Fajr, it can be Dhuhr, it can be Asr, it can be Maghrib, it can be Isha. All these five daily prayers, each prayer on its own. So you can live in one single day, but you have the thawab of a person who went for Hajj and Umrah, seven times from every single day. The choice is up to you. These are the bounties of Allah. ذَلِكَ فَضُّلُ اللَّهِ يُوْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah gives them to whomever He wishes. It is you to choose what you want. But Allah has given it out to you. So the Prophet says, فَأَجْرُهُ كأجر الحاج حجته. This person gets the reward of a person who went for Hajj and performed Hajj. And in its continuity, the Prophet says, for a person who غَدَ was at home إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ He comes to the masjid for Salat al-Duha, to pray Salat al-Duha. This person فَأَجْرُهُ كَأَجْرِ الْمُعْتَمِرِ This person gives, uh, gets the ajr and thawab of a person who went to perform umrah. So we have these opportunities with us. These are the bounties of Allah that he gives us. And they are not limited to seasons. That's why I will repeat, 
brothers and sisters in Iman. The message behind this khutbah today is not how I will get the ajr of hajj. No. The message is if we worship Allah in these seasons out of motivation that we will get the bounties of Allah. So this motivates us to wait for next season. When is the next season to worship Allah? Ramadan. When is the next season to worship Allah? The first 10 days of the Hijjah. When is the next season? The month of Muharram when we have uh, the fast of Ashura. So we focus ourselves in worshiping Allah because we are motivated by thawab and ajr. Let us know that these bounties are there with us and they will remain with us. It's only how smart you will be as a Muslim and how much what you will choose to use to do your bargain with Allah to get his bounties. Brothers and sisters in Iman, indeed, today we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have three opportunities seated here in this masjid. The first opportunity, subhanallah, the bounties of Allah. We have the opportunity of having a house built for us in Jannah. How? Man bana lillahi masjidan bana allahu lahu baytan fil Jannah. If a person will partake in building the house of Allah, the masjid here in dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build them a house in Jannah. This is from the bounties of Allah. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ And we can get this ajr here in this masjid. Why? Because alhamdulillah Allah has selected us. He has chosen us today in that we have a request made by one of our brothers called Ma'alim Ibrahim from Mandera County. He's building a mosque and they are doing the finishing of that mosque. And what they need are the electrical parts of finishing a mosque or a house of Allah in dunya for us to begin with Allah with whatever contributions we'll make to get our houses and our mansions in Jannah, insha'Allah. So after Salah, we'll be giving out very quickly for the sake of Allah for this mosque in Mandera County. Secondly, brothers and sisters in Iman, we have the opportunity of getting mountains of gold similar to the size of Jabal Uhud today in that we have at least two janazas with us here today. So I will urge us to take opportunity and pray Salatul Janazah and if possible we follow these janazas and we bury them and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says for a person who will do that Falahu Qiratayni this person gets an equivalent amount of the mountain of Uhud, two mountains of Uhud, gold, full, yani two gold, a mountain of gold the size of Uhud, two mountains. If you are to pray and you go and bury it, what of if you are to pray upon two janazas? It's multiplied. Allah is not stingy. His bounties are limitless. So we have the opportunity of getting all that in this masjid. Plus, we left our homes, inshallah, with wudu for salat in maktuba. Plus, we attended here this khutbah to learn something that we will take home or to teach. So inshallah, we will have the ajr of hajj and umrah. Insha'Allah, in addition to that, Ibadullah, inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ala muhammadin, kama sallayta ala ibrahima wa ala ala ibrahima innaka hamidun majid, warda, Allahumma an sa'iri sahabati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خصوصا منهم أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي اللهم اهدنا في من هديت 
وعافنا في من عفيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا إلى طاعتك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك أنت الله الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد اللهم أرينا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرينا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم إنا نسألك فعل الخيرات وترك المنكرات وحب الفقراء والمساكين اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن الكريم واجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته أن الليل وأطراف النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين لا حجة علينا بل حجة لنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص ومن سيء الأسقام اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الجنون والجذام والبرص ومن سيء الأسقام برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على خير خلق نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله